Testing, testing, one, two, under stress, quattro chico says. Hi guys, and welcome back to Theory Essentials, where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality and everything that goes with the metaverse. Of course, today, very exciting video. Again, we are the stepping stones of the future of augmented and virtual reality, with Qualcomm making some really daredevil dashing releases. Mm, we're gonna talk about this very, very, of course, next. But first, guys, do remember you can enter to win a brand new HP Reverb. G2 sponsored by HP revealed upon reaching the 11,000 subscribers. Another lucky devil will be able to win also a pair of cyber shoes, the gaming station, the carpet, the chair, and everything that goes with it. And a third winner will walk away with a voucher worth 50 US dollars that you'll be able to redeem against your Oculus MetaQuest store, Viport, SteamVR, and now, of course, the Pico store as well. All right, guys, do go to the link in the description below as you'll be able to enter completely free of charge, of course course and you do have to reshare some videos so the faster we get to 11,000 the sooner we can do the giveaway so it's all up to you all right guys let's transition over to today's news which is all about of course the Qualcomm stuff now this is really really exciting let's go to the article here let me just make it bigger for you guys uh, so Qualcomm new AR glasses are thinner and wireless. Now, just to give you a little bit of overview, here's the picture, by the way, it looks really amazing, although it looks kind of still industrial, I would say, not really a fashionable item. However, it is not meant to be for fashion. I do like to, I would want to, to clarify this. Now, Qualcomm, for those who are new in the space, are currently the world leader suppliers in terms of chipsets for all the AR and and also the VR headset manufacturers who are providing the XR2 to God knows how many different uh, people, all the biggest ones, including HP, HTC, sorry, not HP, uh, HTC, as well as Meta, and also they're working with Pico Interactive ByteDance and a whole heap of other people as well. Um, what they do every single year, basically, or every time that they can, is they create a template hardware for all the other manufacturers to be able to then use or replicate or tweak or customize based on the technologies that they provide to these various different manufacturers. And what's very uh, coincidental is that now, the, basically the design here is that it's supposed to link back to your phone and your phone will do all the hard pulling, as it were, the computing, which will then be Bluetoothed or transferred or whatever, Wi-Fi back to the actual glasses. So you'll be able to see all the various different things in augmented reality. Now, this goes very similarly to the, uh, if I was to do a very quick uh, Apple AR glasses, phone and then we do a uh, just an image search very quickly basically the apple glasses are supposed to be powered by the actual phone uh, let me see if i can find uh is this would this be the one i'm not quite sure but basically yeah judging by the copyright or trademark filed by uh, apple trademark designs there we go um then normally i should be able we should be able to see some trademark designs but basically there are the videos i've done on the channel so do go and check those out but basically it's supposed to be powered by the actual phone the iphone itself so it seems that qualcomm have provided a template solution that goes in line with what apple are basically okay here we go i think this is the one so you see a phone here then you see the person with the actual let me just take this here there we go put it like so uh, let me see if I can make it bigger. There we go. So you can see the person wearing the headset. They have, okay, here there's a wrist thing, but there's also some kind of pocket tin. This could be the actual phone. But at the end of the day, this is basically what Apple are doing. They are using the phone in order to power the AR glasses, which are supposedly going to be coming out in 2024, apparently, if, of course, there are no delays to this. So we're very excited about this. Now, the other thing is that uh, what Quark Qualcomm did. Now, Intel, the reason why they're one of the world leaders is also because Intel in 2017 uh, decided to basically pull out of the competition uh, to providing chipsets for all the various different AR and VR manufacturers, which is a really big surprise. They're focusing on PC. However, you know, the future is AR, the future is VR. That is where everything is going to go. Your PC is going to get smaller, 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 and eventually your PC will be in your head. 
Come on, let's face it. Or it's going to be on the wrist, or it's going to be in your phone for a little while, but the phone is supposedly going to be replaced by AR by 2030. That is what everyone is looking to do. However, robotics, robots are supposed to take over by 2020. One of 2022 is supposed to have them around. They're not here yet, except for, of course, in the manufacturing plants or in some hospitals in Japan. But at the end of the day, robotics has not taken over the world like it was supposed to do. So it's very possible that in 2030, we will still be using our mobile phones. Uh, however, we will also still possibly be using desktops as well, but perhaps they'll just get smaller and smaller. But I don't think 2030 is the year that is going to be replaced. What do you think? Leave a link uh, a comment below about your thoughts about 2030 and what the future holds, whether robots will take over the world, AR will take over the world, and whether AR and VR will take over the world in terms of, uh, you know, computation. And also Qualcomm did also announce back in 2020 uh, the Qualcomm Snapdragon XR2 reference design, which again, this is the design that Project Cambria has been using and also the Quest 2. Uh, and also we could say the Pico um, in some some forms have been using in terms of you know what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to have been a super hyper computer, uh, including seven camera supports, two by 2K per eye dual panel, six degrees of freedom, which means it, you can actually bend in VR, you can jump in VR, you can do everything you can do in real life, but inside of VR, 60 gigahertz wireless and also Snapdragon X5 5, 5G modem RF system. So this was, again, supposed to be completely uh, revolutionary and you know blow everybody's minds away in terms of what it could do. It could mix reality, uh, do mixed reality, sorry, as well as virtual reality, which basically means you could see uh, AR pass through inside of your VR headset without having to put a second, um, you know, a different hard piece of hardware on your head. Uh, it's all in one, so you could go inside of VR or you could go inside of, um, you know, uh, of 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 VR itself. So let me just show you, for example, what it was supposed to do. So here are some references, uh, you know, another trailer just to show you what it was supposed to do. Um, so basically you have the kid going around, he can see in mixed reality, so his house becomes the actual game, um, you know, and you can see the rendering there of how things become in 3D, whether, of course, he's inside of his own home, as I just mentioned just now. And here you have another example. We have a holographic telepresence where you don't need to go inside of VR. You can see your surroundings inside of your own house, so in the real world. And then you have the uh, augmented reality superimposed, or you can go back inside of VR, so your entire space becomes uh, a different reality. So this is basically a reference design used for other manufacturers to then be able to uh, use as a template to then customize whatever it is that they want to customize inside of their own VR or AR headsets. So let's look at the actual article. So Qualcomm is introducing a wireless version of its augmented reality VR headsets. Now this is uh, actually revolutionary because at the moment, everyone else who's coming on the market are providing a solution where it's actually tethered to your phone. So that means that basically you have your phone here and then you have your glasses and then boom, you have to put the wire inside your home, your, your, your phone, sorry, in order to power your AR glasses. Now what Qualcomm are now uh, suggesting is to come up with a solution that is completely wireless and there is no wire of what so, the, so ever kind. Sorry, I just, just woke up, guys, uh, not too long ago. It's Sunday morning. Um, just trying to find my words sometimes. So the wireless AR Smart Viewer updates Qualcomm's earlier smart glasses designed with a higher powered chipset plus a tethering system that uses Wi-Fi 6 or 6E and Bluetooth instead of USB-C cable that comes with the trade-off of a potentially very short battery life. Uh, so the new Smart Viewer was developed by Coltec. Uh, it's currently available to a few manufacturing partners with plans to expand access in the coming months like its prede uh, predecessor. It connects to a phone or computer and develops mixed reality experiences with full head and hand tracking. Oh, hand tracking as well, guys. Now, this is quite big uh, because, of course, if you don't have to use any controllers or you don't have to use your phone in order to navigate, now that's going to be pretty, pretty awesome. Using hand tracking cameras and projections uh, powered by micro OLED displays, Qualcomm has maintained the previous 1920 by 1080, so that means it'll be HD, not 4K at this moment in time. 
resolution. So that is actually pretty awesome that you have to, you could use your hand inside to manipulate all the various different things. And because it's, a, now augmented reality generally means that you just point something at something with your phone and you can see the actual interaction and you have to use your phone in order to interact with the object. Now this is not AR then, this is mixed reality because mixed reality actually means that you see AR in the pass through, but then you can use your actual hands to physically move or, 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 or make an object bigger or smaller or move them or tap them and get rid of them or to potentially do a high five with someone who's holographic presence. Now that is very, very exciting. If this is indeed where the industry is heading at this moment in time and not five years from now, but potentially next year. Now that would be fantastically amazing. And of course, mixing this with the pass through of the Pico XR headset and also other potential manufacturers that will be coming on board the scene very, very soon, who will be competing, we think within a year or two, including of course, Apple with their uh, mixed reality pass-through headset as well, which we're all anticipating to be coming out very soon. Qualcomm has maintained, so this will be 1080, 1980 by 1080, which is HD, as I mentioned, now 4K, a 90 hertz refresh rate, which is not bad. This is the industry standard now. We've gone from 72 to, to 90. And of course, not every single manufacturer is producing um, apps, let's say, or games that are 90 hertz. Most of them are still at 72. Now, the higher the hertz or the higher the frame rate basically means that it will render faster, which means it'll be smoother. Uh, there won't be so much color bleeding. Uh, there won't be so much light leaking things happening and also people will be able to see things, um, you know, like the next frame happening after the other faster. So for esports and all these kind of things, it will also give a competitive advantage to all these people as well. But it doesn't mean that, it basically means that all the developers have to develop their games at 90 hertz at least. Otherwise, it doesn't freaking make a difference. It just means that the hardware is there, but the software perhaps is not developed to catch up with the actual hardware. Uh, but it's highly, slightly narrow, the field of view dropping at 45 degrees or 40 degrees diagonal, wow, now that, honestly, guys, to be honest with you, that is a big turn off. That is a big turn off. Uh, at the moment, the industry standard is at least 90 degrees, which means double the amount of field of view. Can you imagine if you, you I mean, just, just take your hands right now and put them on your actual glasses or your, your face and just hide your eyes and just imagine you can only see 45 degrees. That is, I'm like, why do you even bother announcing something like this if you're telling me that it's only 45 degrees? I'm like, Qualcomm, come on, come on, come on. Wait at least six months or another year before you do your announcements. I mean, I'm sorry, I just want to stop the video right now. 45 degrees, it's like telling me, well, I can drive a Ferrari, but it will only do 50 kilometers an hour. I'm like, well, why do I want your Ferrari then? What's the point? I mean, I might as well get a, a Hyundai, which is going to cost me 100,000 US dollars less, and at least I can do 200 kilometers per hour on it and you know, go on the autobahn in Germany with it. It's like, what's the point? I, sorry, I haven't read this article. Like, this is the first time reading this article. It's like, what is the friggin' point? It's like 45 degrees. Who cares? Who in the world cares? All right, let's continue anyway, but that is... Such a huge turn off for me. I'm so sorry. It's like really like, ah, might as well do it for why then and give me 120 degrees field of view than 45 degrees field of view. That is so stupid. Uh, the sustainability is smaller than the non consumer focus Magic Leap 2. Magic Leap, by the way, is this AR headset here. Let's check it out. Magic Leap. It is not too bad. Uh, I mean, personally, on the channel, we haven't been able to, to try all these very different AR headsets because, uh, well, I don't know, AR people are not as great as the VR guys. The VR guys are more excited about providing us, uh, you know, stuff to try on the channel. But as you can tell, it looks very industrial. Now, of course, HP also have their own HoloLens, um, you know, and there are various other manufacturers out there as well. I'll just show you a picture uh, very quickly. Uh, where is it? It's here somewhere. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, here we go. So Snapdragon partnered with all these various different partners here. Let me load the picture, uh, including Vudix, Google Glass, Realmax, Shadow, uh, Rokid, HTC5, uh, Lenovo, uh, Ichi E, Xiaomi. Um, they have a whole bunch of other people, Realware as well. So 
a whole bunch of other people who are partnering, developing various different things using the Qualcomm uh, templates. Uh, designs that when they release them and also the chipset and camera hardware and all these kind of different things. Um, okay, so which offers 70 degrees of field of view, so as you can tell, Magic Leap are already ahead of the game and also HoloLens are ahead of the game as well, uh, but it's in favor of smart Smart Viewer has a slimmer profile than either the wide Smart Viewer or most competitors. Its frame are 15.6 mm deep compared to around 25 mm for the wide version. Softening AR glasses, typical bug eye look. Uh, this shallower design, uh, which uses freeform optics apparently, uh, might be much harder to achieve. Uh, let me just make sure I can't, yes, I did transfer, okay. Harder to achieve uh, with a finer field of view at 150 grams. It's a little he uh, hefty than 106 grams Nreal light glasses. Now the Nreal glasses are pretty cool. They have actually partnered with Horizon. By the way, uh, let's just take them out just to show you a picture of the Nreal glasses. Here we go. They are freaking awesome, I have to say. And Nreal, if you are watching this video, I would love to be able to get a pair to just try them out. Um, that would be really awesome because they are available in the US and selected countries in Euro. They are not available everywhere in the world at this moment in time, which is why they're a little bit more careful in terms of who they're working with in terms of content creators because if you're not based in the US or in select European countries then they won't work so I won't be able to, to actually see what they do here based in Singapore but they are freaking freaking awesome I have to admit um, and also be a bit lighter than the Rubin 150 grams Apple AR uh, glasses which I showed you earlier uh, for fast filter than VR headsets like the 503 grams uh, Pico as well of course a Pico uh, is heavier than the AR glasses because uh, here's the Pico here. Let me just show you uh, very quickly. So this is the Pico. And by the way, I did a video yesterday. Do go and check out that video, which is here. This is the Pico XR headset, uh, which will provide mixed reality uh, features very soon as well. Um, so that's that. The wireless view uses Qualcomm Snapdragon XR2, which is great. Uh, we showed you the trailer earlier. Uh, do go back into the video to see it. Um, something Qualcomm says offers more power for computer vision processing and other tasks. Qualcomm promises a brisk three millisecond latency between the glasses and the connected phone or PC, as long as your phone or PC includes a Qualcomm's Fast Connect 696. 6900 or 6900 chip. Now that basically means that the future phones are now, that means that Samsung or Apple or all these people, um, well, uh, if they're gonna be using the Qualcomm chipset, that means it means that they actually have to use the chipset in their phone as well. Now that is very interesting uh, because of course some phone manufacturers use their own chipsets. Um, so if they're not compatible with it, then hmm. Does that mean it's going to leave more room for more competitors in the future to develop their own technologies like Apple is doing? doing sorry, uh, And does that mean it's either going to increase the competition or does that mean the Qualcomm eventually are, ha are going to have the, uh, let's say, uh, leading advantage and they're basically going to smash all the other people because they don't have the Qualcomm chipsets because it will be cheaper. That is something to see. That is going to be very interesting for the space. I have to admit, leave your comments below. Let me know what you think in terms of competitivity in the market and who potentially will be on top. Um, that's not a given for, a, for, for many machines. Qualcomm AR VR head Hugo Swart says the actual motion to photon latency is under 20 milliseconds, just clearing the threshold for comfortable mixed reality experience. So let's just, you know, uh, let, let, you know, at the end of the day, this is not an AR pair of glasses. This is mixed reality glasses, guys. This is really a breakthrough in terms of what it's supposed to do. Um, the battery apparently will only be about 30 minutes. Again, I mean, 30 minutes, come on. This is like telling me that uh, DJI just released a brand new drone and you can only fly for 30 minutes long. What is the point? What is the point? Like, what's the point, seriously? I mean, I understand this is the beginning of the beginning, but it's like, it's, again, it's like giving me a Ferrari or a Lamborghini and you're telling me that, oh, I can only put two liters of, of gasoline in it or it's gonna run out after 30 minutes. It's like, what's the point? What's the point? Like, can you do the announcement where you can at least run them for a couple of hours? Come on, Qualcomm, come on, Qualcomm. Uh, leave a comment below, let me know what you guys think below about these announcements. Uh, and I think basically there isn't really much to say in terms of the rest of the article here. So guys, there you have it. 
Qualcomm have released news about the world's first wireless mixed reality AR glasses, not AR augmented reality glasses only. There's a huge, huge difference there. But guys, let's go to the VR Essentials YouTube channel and just say hello to some of you guys because it's been a little while since we actually said hello. Um, okay, so let me go to uh, YouTube Studio. There we go. And then let's go to, uh, guys, do remember that we are doing the giveaway with the brand new HP Reverb G2, as well as the brand new Cyber Shoes, Cyber Gaming Station, everything else, and also, of course, 50 US dollars that you can redeem against any VR title that you want on your Meta Oculus Quest store, Pico store, the Viveport or Steam VR store, completely free. Go to the link description below, guys, as I mentioned before, uh, which will lead you to our Gleam.io page, and you can basically submit your entry over there. We will do the announcement upon hitting the 11,000 subscribers. So completely up to you as to how fast we get there. Please reshare this uh, channel to as many people as you can and also all the videos as many people as you can. All right, let's say hello to a few people. I'd like to welcome Gillesis, NZ News, Emma's Dad, Nutty Something, uh, Spawns World, uh, Out the Lyrical, Aridon Basu, Marion Chu, and also Milan Fureski. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for subscribing to the channel. Let's get to date subscribe and see who joined very recently. I'd like to welcome Swinger, Roy, Debbie Sweka, Nuno Sauso, Sousa, uh, Shane Nanaman, the microphone. Wow, that's a funny name. Uh, someone from Thailand, I would imagine, or somewhere else. Uh, Anub Desai, Ida Di Oliveira, Vince's Vibes, and also Mir Jam. Guys, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much for joining our channel, our community. We're almost, almost 11,000 subscribers, guys. Freaking awesome. Love you guys. Absolutely amazing. Let's just read a couple comments from some of you as well, just to see, because yesterday uh, we released a video on the channel and already we have so many comments. It's absolutely amazing. It's about the Pico Neo 3 link, the truth untold, what they haven't told you in the marketing. Go and check that video out because it is absolutely amazing. A great amount of secret tips there uh, in case you are going to purchase the Pico Neo 3 Pro or the Pico Neo 3 Link. Uh, Artful says six days until the first customer from France, Germany and the Netherlands received their first Pico Neo 3 Link on the 26th of May. Got to wait just under a month for mine to arrive in the UK. I mainly bought mine due to 35% off for a possible Cambria competitor. Already have a Quest 2, but being part of this beta could be an advantage to use early as an early adopter. Artful, you're absolutely right. And thank you so much for your comment. I will reply uh, physically later. Uh, Fluff says, great video, thanks. Uh, I've also emailed Pico and had no reply. Little war, uh, worrying, as I always had a reply from FD Quest, even if it was two days later. Pico needs to be customer focused to win this battle. Yes, that is absolutely true, because I also sent a, um, a, a an email to them about you know what was the difference between the pro and the link, and never got a reply. It's been more than two, three, weeks now. Uh, so I emailed them twice about it. So yeah, it would be great to have reply, obviously. And of course, I hope they reply to you as well. Thank you very much, Fluff, uh, for your comment. DTZ1000, hi again. Uh, by the way, DTZ, good to see a YouTuber with good taste in games. Some YouTubers are way off the mark. Thank you very much. Really, really appreciate that. Uh, Ron S says, I believe that flat square device is a laptop, likely a gaming laptop, or at least a representation of one. Uh, thank you very much, Ron S. This is about because on the video basically on the website uh, Pico shows some kind of device we're not quite sure what device it is we, we really don't know what it is uh, so I was asking people what is it leave your comment below uh, of course and that's what Ronis did some uh, Sarmes says hey how do I enter the giveaway I liked and sub well very simple Sarmes just basically go to the link in the description below uh, which will lead you to our gleam.io page and you'll be able to enter to win a brand new HP Reverb G2 pair of sub shoes at the gaming station or of course a voucher worth 50 US dollars that you can redeem against any VR title that you want on your Oculus, MetaQuest 2, Viveport, SteamVR, and now, of course, the Pico store as well. All right, guys, thank you very much for spending some time together. Love to have been with you. I hope you have an amazing Sunday. Until next time, I'll see you in the comments below in another video very soon. And of course, in this video on tap the right or the left, because I'll see you in that video as well. See you guys. See you in just a moment. Bye for now.